Hey guys, it's Crystal Renee here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thanks for joining. Hey my plenty friends, welcome back to my channel. Before we get into this video, if you can give this video a like, just hit the thumbs up button down below and go ahead and click the bell while you're at it so that way you don't miss a post from any of my future upcoming videos. And also, if you can please interact by leaving a comment down below after watching my video to the end, that will be greatly appreciated and it also helps the algorithm of my channel. And just know with doing that, you are greatly appreciated. Let's get straight into this video. Now, I know myself that I am guilty of not cleaning my plants in the way that I should have. Meaning, I have so many plants that sometimes I don't find the time to clean their leaves or just disinfect them the way that I should to prevent bugs from creeping and crawling in there and attacking some of my plants. I don't know about you, but me, I want to start the year off fresh and just go in and tackle down all the surfaces and along with my plants to make sure they're in the best care as possible. Even when I bring new plants into my home, I want to be better at cleaning them so that they cannot infect any other plants that may be in my home because you don't know what that plant could be bringing into your home when you purchase new plants. We're gonna start off by being better this year and I'm going to show you the solution that you need to make sure your plants are free of spider mites, mealybugs, aphids, and any other soft-shelled or creepy crawler bugs that's harmful to your plants. If you're interested in that solution, then stay tuned. So here are some of the ingredients that you're going to need for this solution. Here I have this sprayer bottle, which you can find on Amazon or probably at one of your local Home Depots or Lowe's. I got mine from Amazon. You're gonna need some water. You wanna use filtered water. That way, once you're misting your plants, you don't wanna leave any um, wet streaks on your plants. So I'm using a little bit of filtered water in here. It's filled up with two quarts of water. And here I have is Dr. Wood's Tea Tree Castile Soap. This soap is all natural and it won't, it is not harmful to your plants in any way. It is a very thick solution so that it will not sub up and it's a lot thicker than your normal soaps. We do not want to use any dish soap or anything like that on your plants because those are too harsh. I use this particular brand because as I mentioned earlier, it is a lot thicker than the other brands. Um, you don't want any watered down stuff. You want some stuff that's gonna get in there and do the job. So I suggest Dr. Woods. And here I have the tea tree. So with the tea tree, it's gonna work as like a disinfectant to your plants. It's a cleansing agent. It's going to kill the egg sacs and the larva that's lingering in your soils dead. You won't have to worry about that. And it also has a good smell to it. So you don't have to worry about any harsh, stinky smells coming from this solution. Everything's going to have your home smelling fresh and natural. Now here I have with the same brand, the Dr. Woods is the Castile Soap. And the, I have the Peppermint Scent. And with the peppermint, it's going to be like a repellent. It's going to be a repellent for your gnats, flying insects, spider mites, mealybugs, any of your soft shell insects that are going to be lurking in your plants. And it also works with ants as well. So if you have an ant infestation, you might want to use the peppermint scented Castile soap as well. And here we have our alcohol. You want to use 70%. That is key. You don't want to use anything stronger than the 70% alcohol on your plants because it is very harmful and harsh. And you don't want to put anything stronger than 70% on the leaves of your plants because it can do damage. So the alcohol is what's going to clear out all of the spider webs 
you know, the webs that's created by the spider mites and such. This is what's going to eat that up and clear it out. Next, we have the hydro peroxide. You want to use nothing more than 3%. If you can get 1%, that would be perfect. But if you can't find 1%, which was hard for me to find, you can use 3%, nothing stronger than that. And the hydro peroxide is going to be kind of like a grenade to those bugs. <laughs> They're going to pretty much explode once they get a whiff of this. So this is going to be included in our mixture as well. Now that I showed you what's going to go into this mixture, I'm going to give you the measurements. So here we have two quarts of warm water. So first let's start with our tea tree soap. You're going to need one fourth of a cup of your tea tree soap. You're going to pour that in there like so. And next you're going to need one fourth of a cup of your peppermint. Next you're going to need a tablespoon of hydro peroxide. Lastly, you're going to need about a cup of your alcohol. And just so I don't spill my alcohol and make a mess, I'm going to use a spout. Whoa. So apparently I put a little bit too much water. Yeah. Okay, so just to prevent making the same mess that I made, you can find something else to go ahead and mix this mixture up into just to be sure that it fits in your container. Now that that's all mixed up, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my container now with the mixture. So guys, I think I figured out what the problem was and why it did not fit into my container because I did not pay attention that this is just a 27 ounce ball and not exactly two quarts. So that is why I'm having the over spillage. So I did purchase the wrong size. So in my case, I will measure this up in a container prior to pouring it in my sprayer. That way I know I won't overspill as you saw me do here, but we all make mistakes. And, and I'm kind of glad that this happened on camera, just to let you know things happen, mistakes happen. And yeah, even Jay agrees. <laughs> now that I got everything mixed, measured out correctly, we're going to try this on one of my plants. And the plant that I'm going to try this out on is my Albo Monstera Borgiana. And because I have not cleaned that plant in some time, that is why I'm using that plant to go ahead and show you how this works. Just a heads up, I am doing some experimenting with my Monstera Albo Borgiana, which we will talk about in another video. So when you see how it looks, don't ask no questions. <laughs> you will see in the next video what I will be doing with that particular plant. Now, just a heads up to prevent making a mess, you may want to do this outside. I'm just going to do this here. As you can see, I put down a towel. Hopefully, I don't get it everywhere, but if I do, I can mop. But if you have carpets or anything like that you don't want to damage, you may want to do this outside so when you're spraying, you don't get it everywhere. So here is my Monstera Albo Borgiana. I know it's been some time since you've seen her. And yeah, we're not going to talk about what's going on because I'm going to save that for another video. But as you can see, these leaves are a little dusty. I have not cleaned her leaves. And she looks a little sad. Um, she could possibly have some... Let's see, I, I'm, it's, I'm inspecting right now as we speak. I have not checked this plant out, but as you can see here on this leaf, let me try to turn her. If you can see this leaf here, it has a little browning and it looks like it had a little 
trouble coming out. This is the newest leaf on it. Um, and sometimes when that happens, and it also looks like it's yellowing here. Like it's not looking as healthy as it could be. So that tells me either she has some type of bugs going on or overwatered. And I doubt that she's overwatered because I really don't try to give this plant too, too much water because I know that they catch root rot fairly quickly. So from what I'm seeing, there are a little yellowing going on in the back of these leaves and spots. So that kind of indicates that there may be some bugs going on here. So we're going to test start our little solution we have here. So I'm going to give this a few pumps. You don't even have to pump it much. And I'm going to spray. Ooh, yeah, it's a very powerful spray. And another thing with this sprayer, you don't have to keep pumping it. You can just hold it down and it's going to spray continuously. So that is why I say it may make a little mess. So first I'm going to spray down the soil a bit. You can even change how you want it to spray out a big mist or just a little bit. And when spraying your plant, you want to spray all parts, stems, leaves, front and back. You want to get all of it. You don't want to miss it. You even want to get the soil because that is where the larva lives, down in the soil. So you want to get that fairly good. So that gets down all into there. So I'm getting it really good. I do not mind that it's getting on my hands, as I mentioned, because it does not do any damage to our hands or skin. Okay, so I've sprayed this plant down from root to tip, all the way down its stem. Now, after doing this, you don't want to sit it in the direct sunlight. You want to put it somewhere where it's not getting a, getting bright light until it completely dries because you don't want to damage your leaves. So you want this to dry completely before placing it back into the sun. I'm going to keep you guys updated with what's happening with this plant. And also, after spraying your plant, you want to do this about a week later just to make sure that you killed off all the eggs and the larva because it takes about a week for them to reproduce. So in case we've missed some of them, you want to go ahead and spray it down a week after spraying it down prior. And if you have a really bad case, do this once a week for about a month, and I guarantee you, your problems are going to be solved. If your situation isn't so bad, one to two weeks, no more issues. So I will be keeping you guys updated on how this plant is doing after me spraying her down. And yeah.
that is pretty much it. I apologize for all the noise in my background. Jay is going crazy. We have the corn man honking. So I apologize for all the noise. But as I was saying, without being really interrupted by my children, give this about a week or two and all your problems should be done. Now, when doing this, you don't want to just do one plant. You want to do all the plants that are in the same area as this plant because you don't want to have to go back and redo it because there's infected plants still in that area. You want to do all the plants and the surfaces. That way, nothing's hopping on to nothing because these bugs do jump. They jump from one plant to another. So you want to make sure you're getting everything in the surface around you clean when doing this. Also, when using this mixture, you want to go ahead and use it up on everything that you're going to use it on. You don't want to save it and use it later because it kind of loses its value, if you know what I mean. It's not going to do as great as it would when you freshly make it. So I would say make a fresh batch whenever you're deciding to do this. That is pretty much it for this video. I hope the solution works for you all and... I appreciate you guys being here for it with all the mistakes that happened in this video and all. If you made it to the end of this video, you're greatly appreciated. And as I always say, enjoy peace, spread love, and be blessed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell so that you never miss a post. Share with all your planty friends. And follow me on my Instagram so that we can interact.